Recently, I went to check out this epic winter landscape and the photos turned out great. They were super cold and super snowy, but admittedly, it took a little bit of work to get to the photos to the point where I felt comfortable with posting them. Straight out of camera, they looked great, but because winter photos tend to be a little bit more monochromatic and I was getting a wash of blue from the sky and yellow from the sunrise, I wanted to really mute this photo down and make it look extra white and extra snowy. So I'm gonna share with you three tips that I used on this photo and some of my other winter photos to really boost it up and make it look super snowy and cold. And I'll also share a bonus editing tip that if you have Photoshop, you can make the photos look even more snowy. First, we kind of want to get this photo to the point where we're happy with the overall exposure. And to do that, I'm going to do my base edits in the basic tab. Now this will depend on the photo that you're using, but in this case, I want to kind of soften up the shadows a little bit and maybe bring down the highlights. Now there's a few problems with this photo in that the sky is super bright and then everything we have going on here in the foreground is a little bit more contrasty. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some selective edits. So we're gonna go into our masking tab and I'm gonna select myself. So in order to do that, you can either do people select, but because I'm facing the other way, it doesn't tend to work that well. So you can either do object select or you can do subject select. In this case, I'm gonna say add new mask, select subject. So it'll take a second and it's done a pretty good job. But we're actually gonna modify it a little bit. I'm just gonna go to subtract gonna grab the brush and then just brush out some of these areas where I don't need it to be selected. With that mask still selected, I'm just gonna grab my shadows and boost them just so I can recover a little bit of the detail in my pants. Now what I wanna do is actually select the background. So I'm gonna go do select a new mask and I'm gonna say select the background so that I can select everything but myself. So including the sky and including the foreground. I know it's it's background, but it's, it's actually the foreground. Basically background means anything but your subject. And you can see in this case, that's exactly what it's done. Now, in order to affect just the foreground, I'm actually gonna add another mask to this. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna say subtract and I'm gonna say subtract the sky and it'll take a second. But now we've got all of that ice texture selected. So I'm actually gonna come into my presence tab, which is where I'm gonna focus a majority of my efforts. If you don't know how to use texture clarity and dehaze, check out this video here. But essentially what it does is it allows you to adjust various levels of contrast. So I'm actually gonna grab the dehaze and I'm gonna drop it down. And what you can see is really quickly, it kind of takes those dark areas and lightens them up so they're not as harsh and contrasty. And that's because dehaze looks at big chunks of contrast, whereas texture is kind of like the little textural details. For now, those are fine. We don't need to touch those. So I'm just gonna close that. Now we're gonna go back to our main editing panel. And I think this is starting to look okay. So I'm actually gonna do some overall all presence adjustments. So I think I'm gonna just boost a little bit of the clarity and maybe a little bit of the texture. And I'll just zoom in to show you what that's doing. If you look at some of the areas like here in my bag, if I drag the texture down, it kind of removes those details. But if I drag it up, now all of a sudden it has a little bit more texture. Same thing with clarity. If we drag the clarity down, you can see it kind of adjusts larger sections of contrast, like maybe in this ice over here. So if we drag that back up, now it's gonna pull those details. I think I'm pretty okay with it where it is. So I'm just gonna go to my main tone curve here and just add a little bit of overall contrast so that you know the photo starts to look a little bit sharper and a little bit more defined. I feel like my blacks are maybe a little bit washed out. Now, one thing you can do with your winter photos is boost the midtones. Now, the midtones are kind of like all of those grays that exist in the middle of your photo. And with winter photos, if you want to have more contrast, you want to keep the blacks. So you want to keep everything that's down in this section here. And actually, we're going to drop it a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast. And then I'm actually gonna slowly play with these midtones here just so that I'm raising them above that curve. You can kind of see the tone curve has a line that's going through it, which represents 
a linear tone curve. But if I wanna make an S curve or add a little bit more contrast, that's where you can start to play with the shape of it and maybe push and pull those mid-tones to get a little bit more contrast out of your photo. So I think that's looking good right there. I don't wanna to go too extreme, but depending on your photo, you might wanna push that or pull that just a little bit more. Now, one more thing I wanna do, I'm jumping over to the blue tone curve, which blue tone curve balances blue and yellow. And in this case, we actually have a lot of blue and yellow in this photo. Like if I pull that back to where it started, you can see there's some yellowy orange tones over here and then some blue tones over here. Even though the orange and the sunrise hitting the ice is nice, actually wanna remove it to make this photo look a little bit cooler. So you can see I've got this point here. I'm just gonna drag it up ever so slightly and you can see, you know, if it goes a little bit from yellow to a little bit more blue, that's just gonna give us a better starting point when we move into the next step, which is adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminance. Looking at the saturation panel, what I wanna do is I wanna remove those blues. We wanna make this look a little bit more white and a little bit more monochromatic. So you can either grab the sliders individually and just you know drag them down. But if you don't know what color is in your photo, you can actually grab this little icon here and then hold over your photo and basically just drag up and down. So you can see if I do that, I'm actually dragging the blue slider and actually a little bit of the purple slider as well. And if you wanna do any manual adjustments, like maybe I wanna remove some of the orange here, I can do that and all of a sudden, this photo has this very monochromatic look, but it still has a splash of green and a little bit of red in my tripod. If you wanted to take this one step further, what you could do also is jump to the luminance and then just drag the blues and either darken them or brighten them depending on how much contrast you want it. Just be careful because luminance is one of those settings that if you push it too much, you can start to get banding. And that's where when two colors are side by side, they don't quite blend together well and you'll get a harsh line in those areas of your photo. Step three is adding color back in. Now, if you were to look at this, we have a lot of white, which is actually good because then when we jump down to the color grading, I can add color to my highlight. So if I wanted to all of a sudden make this look even more blue, all I'd have to do is grab this guy, or if I want a little bit more control, I can go over here to my highlights and say, you know, make the highlights, make them look more blue. And all of a sudden, you know, I've got that there. I can either increase that to make it look really blue or drag that back to maybe just add a little hint of that blue. And you can do the same thing for the shadows. Like lately with my winter photos, I don't know why, but I've been adding a little bit of green, orange, yellow to the shadows just to kind of give them this, like sometimes winter photos, they end up being way too blue. And so adding a little bit of a color just to stylize your photo, depending on your, the direction that you're going for, can help give your photos that unique look. All right, so what I've decided is a little bit of green in the shadows, a little bit of orange in the midtones, and then just that tint of blue in the highlights, but I've also brightened up the midtones. So if I go back to zero, that's what they look like, and just to kind of wash them out ever so slightly more, I've just raised the luminance, which is what that slider is here. And I've also dropped the luminance on the highlights. Again, just to, sometimes if the whites are too bright, the photo can look too washed out. So by dragging that down, if I go before, after, it just kind of gives the photo this overall thematic look. And if you want to know more about color grading and exactly how it works, you can check out this video here. Here? Here, somewhere, somewhere up here. What I really love about this photo is that it emphasizes the contrast between the icy scene, like you see all of the details, you still see everything, but then because I was wearing black and green, it really creates this contrast and allows me to pop out from the background. Like if you go back to the original and you compare kind of what it looked like, you can kind of see how I was blending into that ice sculpture in the background. But when we adjust it, now the sudden it stands out a lot more and it just helps define the subject inside of your photo. Now again, this completely depends on what you're shooting, but in this case, this worked really well for me.
I'm gonna jump to this photo to show you one more bonus tip. If you have a photo and you wanna make it look a little bit more snowy, like, like this photo, it's definitely snowy. You can see that there are snowflakes in there, but maybe I want a little bit more of a snowflake effect. So I'm actually gonna grab this and say, edit in Photoshop. So here's our photo. And what I actually wanna do is add a little bit more snow to it. So I'm gonna open up this video file, which I downloaded from ArtGrid not sponsored, but it's a service I use. And the nice thing about using a video of snow overlays is that you can just scrub the timeline right inside of Photoshop to any point that you want. Maybe I like that point. And you can just do a drag selection, do copy. So I'm doing control C on my keyboard, go back to that other video, that other photo, hit paste. We can say, don't worry, just different color space. Not a big deal for this case. It will paste that, so I'll scale it up to be nice and big so it fill, fills a portion of my frame. And then I'm gonna take the blending mode and set it to screen. And screen basically just removes all the black and leaves all the little white pieces. And you can see if I move it around, now all of a sudden I have more snowflakes in my photo. And if I didn't like some of them, what I can do is apply a mask to that layer, then make sure I have that mask selected, jump to my brush tool, make sure it's nice and big. And because we have a white mask, we need to make sure we're using a black brush, which will erase portions of this. And then I can just say, you know, remove any of the ones that are in and around my face, or maybe I don't like that one. And now all of a sudden we just added a little bit more snow. And if you wanted to, you could copy and paste that multiple times, scale it up and down until you have the desired effect that you're going for. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing if you aren't already. And if you like this video, consider checking out some of my other Lightroom videos right here. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.